Hello there internet. It has been a very very long time. Today is, and you know what, it's been so long, who really cares what today is? Today's been, it's been like a month since I've actually done anything online. Uh, it comes and goes in spurts, as much as I promised, uh, I keep losing track of time, I keep not having time. But regardless of that, I thought I would come to you guys today and tell you about a neat little thing that I purchased the other day. Uh, I've got good thoughts about it, and I've got bad thoughts about it, and of course I'm not actually going to reveal anything as far as the effect, well, the effect I will tell you about, but I won't reveal it. Um, eight, maybe eight, nine years ago when I first started with Illusionist, there was a young guy named Nate Staniforth who was featured on the end of, I think it was Crash 2, doing a, uh, a card trick, and everybody liked that. Nate was really keen, uh, uh, did a very good video for us, it was fantastic, got good reviews, uh, and because of that, he uh, filmed a video called Spellbinder. Now, it's been a long time since I've seen Spellbinder, uh, and I don't even think we sell it anymore. But it is a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was just a, a video of Nate performing. There was nothing taught. It was just Nate, Nate's journey in magic. Sometime after that, maybe five, six years ago, maybe maybe less actually, he uh, released another video called Magician. And again, it's been a while since I've seen this one, so I can't really accurately uh, portray what was in that video. But it was good. I remember watching it once, and of course, that's how much of an impact it left. But I do remember being impressed. Now, Nate, over the years, has been performing. He's been performing a lot. He has uh, He's doing a lot of college work. Uh, apparently, he's doing uh, clubs and that as well. He's a working magician, and as a result, working magicians get creative when they need to get creative. And I remember seeing a video, oh geez, probably last year, the year before, of Nate doing a trick that was uh, that just blew me away. I couldn't figure, I couldn't believe what he had done, and I was jealous. I wanted this trick. Essentially, he basically took a beach ball, which is a standard, this is also a standard method for selecting people in the audience so that people know you're not choosing stooges, I might add. But he would take a beach ball, just chuck it into the audience, get them to stand up and give out any two digit number between like maybe like one and 60 or something like that. It doesn't have to be two digits, but any number between one and 60. Uh, that beach ball was then chucked to another place, same process, and in, all in all, six different times that beach ball was thrown uh, and if I remember he either asked for a volunteer or the beach ball was thrown again and that person who caught it the last time was brought up onto stage and in full view th these people just basically uh, stood up rhymed out their numbers they, st they stayed standing so that uh, he uh, would recognize who they were and what their numbers were so that volunteer would come up and Nate would just very cleanly in plain view that was all the time we pick up his wallet. Inside the wallet was a lottery ticket, and that lottery ticket contained all six numbers that the spectators had chosen. Uh, and at the time, I thought it was impossible. I thought there was no way on God's green earth that this is possible, uh, especially under the conditions upon which it was uh, portrayed in the YouTube video. And I must say that that trick was done superbly. The the staging. Uh, the mechanics of how he interacted with the audience, his personality, the rapport, fantastic. That was a, is a quality, quality video. If you can look it up on YouTube, by all means, go ahead. I'll uh, look up like Nate Staniforth Lottery Trick or, anything, or something like that. And uh, so fast forward to about three or four weeks ago. I was talking to a, uh, a friend of ours, uh, sorry, a friend of mine who I, I talked to on Skype. I've never actually really met him yet. Uh, Michael Sandereco or something like that. I can't pronounce his last name because I've never pronounced it. Uh, he works with Illusionist doing some stuff for us, uh, doing some support tickets, things like that. It doesn't matter what he does. But he, he actually has met Nate. He's talked to Nate a few times. And he casually mentioned that, oh yeah, Nate released his lottery ticket trick uh, in the form of a book. And I'm like, shit, yeah, I want that. Uh, and then he dropped the, the hammer on me. He's like, oh yeah, he want, there's only 150 copies of this book. And as you well know, uh, I like collecting books. But then he dropped the bombshell, which was, oh yeah, this, this book is like 300 bucks. I'm like, are you kidding me? 300 bucks? And I thought, too, I thought about it, I thought long and hard, maybe like five minutes total, and I said to myself, you know what, if this trick is only going to be released in book form, 150 uh, copies, and that's it, this is a worthy investment. The trick, I don't care if it's done on, on video, the book itself is a worthy investment. So I, I went ahead and I, I ordered the book, uh, I ordered it from Nate, sent a message, hey, it's been a long time, let's see, he actually remembered me, and the book came. And this is what I got, uh, a soft cover book uh, with high gloss paper in, on the inside, 
which means this type of paper isn't going to decay as fast over time, much not like a, like a standard paperback book. Uh, it's acid free and therefore the book doesn't really, the paper doesn't eat itself. Most books pr uh, that are printed on, at, like without being printed on acid free paper, over time the, the quality of the paper just gets more brittle and more brittle. It yellows, it ages, uh, and then you, you get that old smell that like you read, you know, your grandfather's house. Your grandparents' house smells like that because they're full of old books. Let me just tell you that right now. But uh, I went ahead and I bought the book. Uh, it came just yesterday. And inside, uh, I was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with this $300 book. Now, you guys are going to laugh at me. This is an investment for me. I realize 300 bucks is a lot to pay for like one trick. The, the, the trick, number one, is worth it. It's fantastic. Uh, but the book itself is an investment for me. Whether it goes up in price or whether it goes down in price, I'm unsure. Maybe like in 10 years, this might be worth $300, it might be worth $200, it might be worth $1,000. You never know. But there are going to be some people in here who, who actually want the information that's contained within. Now, when it's time for me to retire or pass this collection down, who knows? It, like it might be worth so much that, you know, my, my kids get rich. But at this point in time, it's just, for me, it's just a trick. It's a trick. And as I was reading it, Nate goes into the history of it. Uh, it's very, very, very well written. Uh, it's, it looks to me like it's been proofed a few times. And he actually says uh, that um, the inspiration for this trick was from the mind and magic of David Burgess. And I think, uh, oh, do I have, hold on for one quick second. I think I actually have one here. I don't actually have... I don't actually have that book he was talking about, but I do have one called The Burglis Effects, uh, which I haven't gone through yet to see if you know the information in here is referenced in the information here or, or vice versa. But uh, you know, it, it's nice to know that I, I'm collecting the right books anyways. But basically he goes into saying um, the inspiration for the effect, how he, it came to be, how uh, he turned it from a Frankenstein of like one or two different effects into the what, what it is now. And I won't lie, the $300 investment is the first investment you need to make. Uh, as we all know with magic, there are things that are required, there are things that you need to do, uh, and you know some magic is cheap, some magic is not cheap. This is the kind of effect that is not for your average hobbyist. This is not for the guy who says to his friends sitting in a bar one day, hey, wanna see a trick? Uh, if you do do it, then you know, Hell yeah, dude! You like you're getting a reputation right then and there. But this is a trick for a working magician. This is this is a trick for someone who goes out there, earns his bread and butter doing magic day in and day out. I can understand why there is only 150 printed because he doesn't want any every Tom, Dick, and Harry going out and performing this. Since how this is I, what I would consider his signature piece, he actually considers it a throwaway, um, something to be done wherever, whenever. You know, like I, I can, I think it's the best trick that I've ever seen him do. Granted, I've not seen him do a ton, but this is the one that's left the most impact on me, and this is what I consider his best. So, on that note, if you're just a hobbyist, like you're not even going to want to give this a second chance. Don't even, don't even think about it. Don't even sweat about the, the details or how it's done. This isn't something you're going to want to do. Sorry, this is something you're going to want to do. But everything that's involved is something you're not going to want to invest in to do. Uh, the working magicians, like like I said, the guys who are doing magic, you know, three four days a week, uh, touring around the country, uh, doing stage shows, fundraisers, things like that. This is the kind of thing that I think that those guys would want to do. Myself, I could see myself putting this together because every now and then I still do a fundraiser show. Uh, I still do uh, shows, uh, you know, like special specialty one-off shows that I do for friends or, or people, special functions that I am associated with. Um, I don't hire myself out. I don't perform other than those effects. Uh, sorry, other than those, uh, you know, venues. But this is something I would consider performing in one of those venues. That's how much impact this has. This is a closer. Uh, if you can find anything like, especially especially a mentalism effect, this this is definitely a closer. If you can find something as or more powerful, then by all means, go ahead and do that. Like your your show will be phenomenal. But it's not for everybody. But it is an amazing, amazing trick. It's broken down. I think uh, basically like there's there's one trick. He's broken it down into uh, like three different ways, three or four different ways to set the trick up, three or four different ways to get the trick ready, three or four different ways uh, to have, have the trick function while you're performing it, and another three or four different ways to, to finish and finalize and present the effect. Like, 
like it's basically like a choose your own adventure with like a lottery trick. There's so many different ways that you can perform the trick, present the trick, uh, show the trick, reveal the trick that like it warrants this thick a book. Like you would think that like you know just one trick doesn't really warrant this much of this much paper or anything like that, but it does. Uh, and I will say he's gone into remarkable detail, remarkable thought, and incredible, incredible creativity in order to come up with the, the book that you see here. Chances are they're all sold out by now. If they are, then really, like like I said, no love lost. You're not going to miss it. If they're not, unfortunately, you and if you wanted one, sorry, if they are sold out and you, you wanted one, I'm sorry, it's too bad. If they're not sold out and you want one, by all means, go scoop them up. I don't see them lasting much longer if they're not already sold out. And so uh, that is my two cents on the Nate Staniforth lottery trick. Again, look it up on YouTube. You will be blown away 100%, I guarantee it. And until next time, my name is David Mitchell, and you guys have a nice day.